We may not make the decision in that week or that month or that year to be the good man that we are, but we are. And there's no getting by it. And it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter who my dad is talking to. He sees that good man in you. And he wants to remind you of it. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to Native Soil. It's season two, series two, episode four, and we are exploring this year that Archbishop has dedicated to the Eucharist in the parish. Pope Francis is dedicated to St. Joseph, and we are blessed today to walk through these things with a good buddy of mine, Michael Zogby Jr. Thank you for having me, Father. Thanks for being here. Yes, this is sir. great. You've been a supporter of Native Soil. You've, you've been encouraging me since we started. Uh, you do a lot of driving for business, and and you you listen on the road, and <laughs> it's only fifty thousand miles a year. Yeah, it's not, it's not, it's that, not, big. It's not that much. You got to fill the time somehow. Exactly, absolutely. Might as well take some native soil. Yes, for sure. Pass the time. For sure, for so, sure. Uh, the best parts of my drive. That's good. Yeah, that's what we like yeah, to hear. Yeah, thank you, Father, for your, for doing that. Well, we're happy to do it. Happy to have you on, and just um, tell everybody a little about yourself and where you're from, a little about your family, just some background. So, uh, my name is Michael Zogby Jr. Uh, I'm born and raised in Fairhope, Alabama. I, um, I currently live in Fairhope, Alabama uh, with my wife, Jessica, and my two sons, Michael the third and George. Um, Michael's six. I'm sorry. Michael's eight. <laughs> Get it right. George, Your yeah, wife might be listening. Exactly. <laughs> don't, don't ask me birthday. I'm kidding. Um, so Michael, Michael is eight. Yeah. George is six. Um, and uh, my parents still live in Fairhope, right down right. the road from us, which is really nice. Right. Um, so I grew up going to church at, uh, at St. Lawrence, went to school at Christ the King, you know, met my wife there, that kind of stuff. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm guessing people listening, if they're from the Mobile area, they probably have met a Zogby or heard of a Zogby. Uh, you guys have been around the Mobile Catholic world for a while. Yes. If, um, if, 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 yeah. If, you, if, been, if you've visited Mobile, you've probably met one of us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, either us, Naaman's, Khalifis, Kaylee's, you know, we're yeah. all, we're all the big Lebanese Catholic. That's a whole nother episode I want to do is like the Lebanese Catholic presence in our diocese. Cause okay, so what are we it, looking at? Five hours? Yeah. I think we might be like six ten, hours. Yeah. 15 episodes. Yeah, I, I mean, we can have two, four, you know, the tentacles are in like every parish yeah. like, and it's a good thing. It's a, yes. it's a blessing. And it's amazing to me, like the staying power of the Catholic faith and like the Lebanese immigrant community. So sidebar for another for another episode another series lots of rosaries lots of rosaries yeah that's that's the staying power <laughs> that's right it. there that's, it. that's just, the secret sauce just keeps everyone locked in <laughs> yeah for sure love that all right so you're from this big lebanese catholic family tell me a little bit about your relationship with the eucharist growing up what was it like then what was it what is it like now so growing up uh i went to church every sunday of course um and i knew what the eucharist was I know what the Eucharist is. Uh, it's the body and blood, soul, and divinity of Christ himself. Um, and growing up, you know, obviously you just kind of go and and try to stay quiet and not get in trouble. Right. Um, and then <laughs> in high school, I was, I was very involved in Life Teen and um, went on a lot of religious retreats, Steubenville, others, and, and grew very close to my faith um, in a lot of ways. And, and uh, then in college, got away from it for sure. Uh, really stopped going to mass. Um, you were at Alabama, is that right? I was at South Alabama. South Alabama, yeah, South Alabama. So, uh, so anyway, I, um, you know, through the grace of God, found my way back to the church, and uh, and uh, the power of the Eucharist is uh, it's unbelievable. So, if uh, I've considered this more since you know you asked me to be a part of this. And, uh, and, and, and reading and listening to the last supper, um, you know, Jesus says, do this in memory of me. He doesn't say, um, when you get a chance, you know, right. or if you, <laughs> if you can fit if it you in, could consider doing this in memory of me. He kind of, he says, do in other words, commanding us to worship in that way. And I think the reason he did it is because he knows what will bring us peace and joy. So, and this is, you as you've matured kind of in your, I mean, your husband now, your father, um, the Eucharist for you has become a source of that peace and joy. You'd oh, say. 
Yes. I mean, it's crazy. I was talking to my wife about it and uh, she's so insightful in a lot of these things. And um, she kind of went through, okay, um, getting ready for mass with children. Now, now that our children can, can kind of dress themselves, it's right. a little better. Right. But, but I mean, getting ready for mass, it's like, you know, it's kind of this wave of, 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 of uh, anxiety because we know we're going to be late. Right. It's the just how late are we going to yeah. be? And, and it's, and it's, you know, anyway, and with the whole COVID thing, the only seat left is in the front. It's just, it's just, it's, <laughs> it's just, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, and, and she was saying, you know, you go through all this to try to get to mass, but then when you finally get there, it's so incredibly powerful and it's so worth it. And it's so life giving. Mm. Uh, it was a real testament. Beautiful. Now, all, all the craziness, there's kind of, kind of, you get there and there's kind of a peace and joy that comes uh, being there, being the Lord's presence, worshiping God. Um, Absolutely. It's awesome. Yes. So you've got an uncle who's a priest, Father Paul Zogby. Shout out out there if you're listening. <laughs> um, what was it like having a priest uncle growing up? What kind of impact did that have on you? Uh, you know, having a priest just totally scandalized was, you just <laughs> yeah i mean it was the i i don't know what could be a better experience yeah he's such a great guy i mean he is so um he is such a a, a good man he is so uh insightful he is so full of wisdom um and 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 growing up you know he's my godfather also yeah so he's my dad's brother he's my uncle but he's my godfather. Um, so, so is he kind of on your case, like about getting a mass or pressing oh my your goodness. faith? Or- <laughs> my uncle Paul has never been on my case in my life. And really, and that's true. He, he, he is, uh, gosh, he is just so loving and kind. And he, if you ever heard, if you've ever heard him speak, he is able to summon the right words at the right time. And I think a lot of that is his prayer life, you know, and him asking the Lord to be, you know, to use him as a, as an instrument. Right. Um, and, and let me tell you, he's, I mean, he, I, I've been in, in a very good relationship with the Eucharist and with Jesus. And I've been very, very disconnected. Right. And my uncle Paul has always been a source of wisdom and encouragement and, uh, and if I ask him for his advice, he gives it to me, yeah. whether it's, you know, whether it's going to hurt my feelings or not. And sometimes he gives me advice, sometimes every now and then he does give me advice that, 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 that is unsolicited, but I know that it's out of love. Right. And I know that whatever my choice is moving forward, he's going to support me awesome. and, and love me through it. It's cool. Just as you're talking, I'm remembering, I've heard him preach a number of times, but, um, and speak a, a number of times, but a lot of times he will reflect on your grandparents, like on his mom and dad <sighs> yeah, and draw true. from that. But that's kind of cool in the context of this is, um, even his own priesthood is like informed by, I think his experience of the faith growing up in y'all's family. Yes. And I just think that even listening to it is like edifying to be like, wow, like priests don't just come out of nowhere. You know, but like there's this big kind of faithful family that, you know, he kind of emerged from and, you know, now he's, you know, leading the family of God. But um, that's always impressed me. I've heard him reference, you know, different people in y'all's family and different talks and things. I've been in one of his homilies that, I know, that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a good or a bad example I, I don't to the remember. <laughs> I just remember telling my cousins about it. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, what's your experience of parish uh, growing up? I mean, you grew up at St. Lawrence and you're a member of St. Lawrence. So that's kind of cool. Yes. Like growing up in a parish and come back to the parish. What's it mean to you to be part of a parish? So, um, hmm. when I was younger, um, the parish was just someplace we went every Sunday. Right. Um, a- as I grew older, the parish became a place I really hung out, especially with, uh, with, with life teen. And that was great. It was a great experience. Um, you know, in my life today, we have two parishes. And really, growing up, I had two parishes. I had my, my, my school parish, Christ the King, right. and then then and then and where we worshiped on Sunday, which is St. Lawrence. Right. Um, so I think both of those parishes affected me in a very positive way, Christ the King particularly. Um, and and now that I am raising a family and, and, and uh, 
really able to evaluate it from that standpoint, Christ the King is as much of a part of our parish life as as St. Lawrence because both of our children attend Christ the King. And they have created such a wonderful environment for our children to grow up knowing Christ. And, uh, and, and it's, and, and, um, you know, with sacred heart and with the new, um, camp Holy spirit, uh, and that kind of being a part of St. Lawrence, that St. Lawrence is, um, really in position to have a huge effect on, on my children's life, on my life, uh, in, in, in a very special way with that. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of what you're saying kind of relates to young people, like the nourishment that you got as a young person through the Christ King School, through Life Team. Was that Todd Sylvester? Todd was uh, my wife's uh, youth minister at St. Ignatius. No Actually, um, oh gosh, Myland. I, 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 my, I, it was another. It was another youth minister. Somebody was a great. very nice man. <laughs> very good guy. Oh, good. Uh, I, 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 uh, I remember him. He's he's such a, a good influence. No, and you've mentioned that a couple of times. That that was formative. Going to Christ King School. Now your kids. That nourishment for the young people. And I think a lot of time parish life we do ministry to young people well, but um, I think sometimes there can be a challenge when it comes to kind of when you get to be a young adult or. You know, what about, what do we have for young adults? What do we have for young parents, you know? And I just, I'm just i thinking of this because I got a call from you a couple of years ago and uh, we had gotten to be friends and you were just saying, you know, I want I want something more. Like I want, I want to know people better, um, kind of my age, in my parish, in our area. And l- talk a little bit about that. What was it, what do you feel like you were missing or, or you were looking for like when you called me? Um, kind of you're looking for in parish life. So, um, hmm. I, at, at that, at that point, my children were younger, mm-hmm. right. And, and getting to mass was, was, was the, the, the first stage of the mountain. Mm-hmm. Right. And, 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 and there was, there was 80% of the mountain to go. Right. <laughs> and that 80% was getting through mass. Right. <laughs> you know, with young children. Yeah. And if you have to experience the cry room, uh, and then, you know, if you are out in mass, you know, trying to keep them from distracting others as they try to worship and, you know, maybe a great mass was three minutes of, of, of solid, you know, kind of, uh, you know, not having to worry about that kind of thing. So, so, um, you know, getting to mass and then, and then, and then really trying to exit in a way that, that didn't cause a commotion right. <laughs> was, uh, was more important than anything else. So we'd see people and we'd wave. And, and we saw a lot of people with children our age that were going through the same thing that we were. Right. And, and, and it's crazy when you're going through that, you think that you're distracting other people around you. And, and in all actuality, most of them have been through that. Right. And, and they are very sympathetic to it, empathetic to it. It's not like it's a distraction. It's great. I mean, it's, I mean, they're happy that you're there, right. uh, but you don't really see, I mean, that's not what you're experiencing in that moment. So, um, I was talking with Gardner Maloof and, um, and, and he brought up, you know, we see all these people sure it would be nice if, if, if we were able to get them together right. and, uh, and, and, and we kind of ran with that and I, I wouldn't let it go. Cause I thought it was a great idea. Right. I mean, an excellent idea. Right. And, and, um, if, if it would have been up to me and Gardner, we wouldn't have done it because, you know, we don't know any of those people. Our wives do. Right. <laughs> so Courtney and Jessica, Courtney Maloof, his wife. Jessica, my wife, um, they were able to contact some of those people. And, 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 uh, I remember you asking me what we were looking to get out of it. And we really didn't know. We just knew that there were other people that were experiencing the same things that we were and the same struggles and everything else. And, and, and gosh, dog, they were trying to get to church too. <laughs> and so we all, we all had that common bond. It would be nice to, to know what more we had in common and, and establish some relationships. Yeah, it was special. Like y'all's wives did an amazing job and got together like twelve couples or something. Yeah. Um, one night just for a dinner and hang out and and, and your friend came and my friend, my friend, uh, Father Adam Johnson, diocese of Kansas City. Shout yeah. out to him. There you go. <laughs> Happened to be in town, so I drug him along. And but I, the thing that impressed me was a it was really fun, but b it was like um, everybody was feeling that same thirst that y'all had i think for fellowship but also for faith to be able to share their faith with like other people and so i remember i was like just sitting around and everyone just sharing like a way that they encounter christ in their life and it was rich 
I mean, it was really profound, like what people had to say. And, um, it was just one night, but it was a, it was a special night. And I, and I know kind of moving from there, it was kind of, well, what, what next? And, um, somehow came up with the idea of what if you tried to get all these couples or different people to go to the Minna St. Joseph Outback retreat, yeah, which is for right. couples. Exactly right. Um, and so then we tried to round up another night like that. This was probably like a year le- or six months later or something. Yeah. And it was like 40 couples. Yeah. And so it's like 40 it couples. It was a lot. Or it was, it was 20 couples, 40. It was a right. lot of people. Yeah. And I got sick at the last minute. I think I had COVID. I was like early COVID. You bailed. I bailed. I, I abandoned. <laughs> I abandoned the group. Yes. Father Dan Good, though, came to the rescue. Yes. Yes. Um, Thank God. And so just kind of another night of faith and fellowship. But then... Um, uh, Pepper Huff, who was uh, on a previous episode, he and his wife, I think, had shared with people about their experience with mm-hmm. Outback. Yeah, and there was Susan, kind of this big... Susan and Bill hosted us. Yeah, right? it was great. It was great. It was and there was this big evening. pitch for all these couples y'all's age to go do this retreat. Mm-hmm. And there was much excitement and and what was going to happen. And out of those 40 couples who came that night, how, how many went on the retreat? So there were a few that committed. Right. You know, two particularly. Right. Two committed. Right then, me and Gardner. And Gardner. <laughs> We're going to set the tone. We're, we're going. We're going to set and, the tone. And, and a few more people, you know, but leading up to the, the Minnesota St. Joseph's Outback, I mean, that is such a powerful and wonderful experience that, you know, Satan truly attacks it and, and will do whatever he can to dismantle your, your desire or, or will to go. Right. right? And, and, uh, and, and. I mean, COVID was 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 coming down the pipe. I mean, that was kind of it was the weekend thing. that everything shut down. It was the weekend everything. It was the weekend, was that, the weekend that you went to Walmart on Thursday and there was aisles full of toilet paper, and you went to Walmart on Sunday evening and there was zero toilet paper left. No one, right. nobody knows why. Yeah, <laughs> that somehow that was the. <laughs> That the happened. commodity that had to be stored. That happened. That happened. So, um, so anyway, it ended up uh, in God's providence. Uh, Gardner and I did go with our wives, right? And and we were we were the only ones from the group that went, which was fine. Really, it was it was great. It was actually wonderful to experience that with them. Um, and I remember talking to you afterwards, and you said, you know, maybe in God's providence, like if all these other couples would have gone, you know, you would have been kind of like tending to them and trying to make sure, okay, we, we, we stuck our neck out there for this, like make sure they had a good weekend, but it gave y'all the freedom to just experience it yourselves and and because you'd never done it and truly focus on our marriages. Yeah. Truly focus on my wife. Right. And, and I knew I didn't have to worry about Gardner at all. <laughs> right. And he right. knew he didn't have to worry about me. Right. Now we, we came together and spoke a lot, obviously, right. but I mean the, the weekend was so spent so intensely focused on, our marriages that it was uh it was life changing. What would you just could you share one thing that changed or one grace you got out of it? Was there was there something a perspective or um uh, an insight that you think um will always kind of you'll take with you? Well, we um I've I've always had a pretty close relationship after after college, you know, kind of after all that. Um with with God, and I've tried to stay close. I've had great examples in my life. My dad has done all he could to to, to keep me close to Christ. And um, so, going on that weekend, it was um, it was edifying, and it was you know how life ebbs and flows, right? And 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 man, just after that weekend, my wife and I were so so genuinely connected. Um, it was just, it was so amazing. And, and since then, um, through the inspiration of Mike O'Neill, um, you know, who's, who's been on the show, another native soil, great caster, <laughs> great man, really great man, very right. passionate man, very passionate man. And he's so, I don't know, he's, he's so moving. So he, he prays over his children every day. And, and I thought that was like, that was a great way to connect with your children. Um, and also bring the Lord into that connection. And, and, and so every night that I'm home, I do a little traveling, but, um, most nights that I'm home, I, uh, I pray over my children and I ask God to bless them. And, you know, that hopefully will carry them, you know, through all the tribulations and trials that I know they're going to experience the same way I did. 
Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's so powerful. Yeah. Your father praying over you, giving you his blessing. I mean, that's biblical too. I mean, all throughout the Old Testament, like people going their father and like getting his blessing and um, obviously your your father's blessing, but asking God's blessing. That's so powerful. I remember talking to you and Gardner after the retreat and y'all were both talking about doing this, mm -hmm. uh, like praying with each other, praying with your kids. And um, your what you just shared was powerful. And also Gardner was saying he and his wife had started praying with each other. Every morning. Every morning. To this day. And he said... It like got me choked up when he said, but he said, you know, what was so cool is, you know, our kids started to notice me and my wife pray. We'd like hold hands. And he said, and just instinctively, we, as we're praying one day, both of our kids come and just, uh, hug our legs like while we're praying. Yeah. And, um, I mean, you just, you, you can't measure the blessings of something like that, you know, and to see a little kid, they just intuit like mom and dad are not only okay, but they're like, yeah being united with God, like God's love it. Like their love is here. God's love is here. And intuitively they just like want to be close to that and like touch that. I mean, this is a powerful image. I think about that sometimes I'm like, dang, that's, that's pretty rich. And I think it's indicative of, of, um, so many things that we imagine in our heads. Okay, fine. We'll pray. We'll pray with each other. You know, Mike said this is probably a good idea. It was great during the weekend. We'll keep trying to do it. And then, okay, all of a sudden, their their marriage is, is being enriched by that. And all of a sudden, their children are just coming into it. It's not like they're having to ask them. It's what God does. God, you know, he want, he, he has a magnetism. And we are. We're, we're, you know, we're always being pulled toward him. Now, we yes. push away a lot. Right. But if you put him in the center... Everything else falls uh, into place. It's amazing. It's, it, it's 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 unexplainable, Father. <laughs> you, I mean, you, right. you you say it, and it's unbelievable things right. that that you go, okay, whatever. I mean, that's that's surely that's not going to happen. And then what happens is, is ten times that happens, right? Because we can't we can't we can't verbalize what what the Lord does or can do, right? He has to show us, and when we allow him, it's excellent. It is. So that goes to something you said earlier. Let's talk about some of the men in your life. You've mentioned your dad. I think that's probably one you want to hone in on is, uh, who have been models of faith to you, kind of been that St. Joseph in your life. Um, can you tell us something about your dad and just how he's, how he kind of like, he put God at the center of y'all's family and you saw that. And Yeah. Uh, so uh, to talk about this without – being emotional is going to be very difficult. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, that's right. You're Lebanese, man. Yeah, that's, uh, that's right. That's it's, right. It's, okay. it's who we are. Yeah. Doggone yeah. it. So, so hold on. Let me, uh, yeah. Get a little coffee, calm yourself down. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. So, so anyway, so my father, he, he grew up, um, he, he, as I was growing up, he was really one of the only physical therapists in Fairhope. So everybody knew him. Yeah. I mean, everybody knew him right. because either their child went to see him, they went to see him, their parent, you know, it was just this, uh, you know, so, so like trying to walk down the pier and things like that, that could never happen. And we could get about halfway and then it was time to go home. <laughs> so, so, so he, he was such a huge influence on everyone around. Right. Um, and you're going to see somebody, he's not just going to say, Hey, Oh no, no, no. He's going to chat for a while. He's going to chat yeah. and see how they're doing. Yeah, and absolutely. Cause, it, cause he cares about yeah. it. Right. And, yeah. and you know, one of the things he's going to say to you, if you've ever spoken with my father is that you're a good man. And, Well, I hadn't talked to him today, this morning yet, so he hadn't told me that today. Right. But he tells me that, I don't know, however many times I talk to him, times three, because they'll tell me three times in the conversation. You're a good man. He does. He tells me all the time. And, I, yeah. and, and, and again, kind of in preparation for our conversation, I've gotten to reflect on that a good bit. Because uh, I know my father's been a huge example in my life, and and really an example of what a good husband is and what a good father is. And, and, and. And so I'm, I'm trying to encapsulate that in, a, in an answer that can fit in this podcast. Right. And, and I think my dad on earth, for everyone around him, has been there to remind us that we're good men. That, you know, God made all of us. Yeah. So... It's crazy. If you take David, chosen one, king of Israel, and you take him in his worst moment, 
he sent a man to die so he could be with his wife, right? right. If you take Joseph, or I'm sorry, Moses, at his, at his worst moment, right. he, he committed murder. He killed a man. Right. So I think all of us can be dragged down by our worst moments. I think it's easy to, to, to reflect on a day and, and say, <laughs> well, I wasn't a good man today, you know, for whatever decisions you made or, you know, and, uh, and, 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 and I think what we lose sight of is that we all are, we may not act like at that, at that moment, right. we may not make the decision in that week or that month or that year to be the good man that we are, but we are that. And there's no getting by it. And it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter who my dad is talking to. He sees that good man in you. And he wants to remind you of it. It's, it's, that's powerful. It's great. It's a, it is excellent example. It is. I mean, uh, you know, we're made in God's image and likeness. I mean, essentially at the core of us, you know, like God is like dwelling within us, you know? Yes. And for someone, I mean, I've been around your dad and I mean, I felt that too. You know, he, you just feel the, the love of like God, the father through your dad. You <laughs> Absolutely. Know? And he has I mean, those kind of piercing eyes, but you can see he's like, he sees that goodness within you. And, but when somebody sees that and acknowledges that it calls you to, to that task of living out of your deepest self. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and, 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 and not, I mean, my dad says all that, you know, he lives it. So when you talk with him, I mean, I talk with him all the time and, and, and when he's going through hardship, he lives it. He goes to God for with things. Right. Um, recently, uh, we had a cousin pass away in, 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 uh, in Louisiana, childhood friends of my father. Um, I mean, he was obviously going through, you know, just a terrible time in life. He took his own life. So he, uh, Anyway, my, my father finds out about this and, and, uh, he was so close to Gabe. And so the way he processed it is part of his grieving process was to record a song and send it to Gabe's brothers and sisters and, and, and to his, 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 uh, his brothers and sisters. And, and, and I think you're going to play it after the podcast, but, uh, you know, it's all about relying on the Lord. And if you can imagine the despair and the confusion in that moment, you know, what do you do in those this heartbreaking, heart wrenching moment. Yeah, the times that you that, that, that there are no words. Right. It's like you're petrified. Yeah. What does he do? He goes to God with it. Right. Immediately, almost to me. I don't know. Immediately to me. I mean, it was just amazing, amazing, a wonderful example. And I've listened to that song, I don't know, three hundred times. It's wonderful. So obviously, the Holy Spirit has ministered to you through it. <laughs> And yes, I'm sure I'm sure it has to others and we'll have it on the end of this episode after the outro, you know, to listen, you can find on the website. We kind of talked about that before, but yeah, what a powerful witness, you know, of, of a man just leading his family, leading those around him to God. Yeah. And the good times, the bad times. I mean, um, that's what St. Joseph does. That's it. I mean, that's, that's such that's, a wonderful model. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's the flight to Egypt, you know, your, your, your family's about to die, you mm. know, the, you, you find out your wife's pregnant. You're not sure how, mm. you know, I mean, there's all these difficult kind of curveballs he had to deal with, but he just silently, you know, kept just putting God at the center, just kept saying yes, doing what he had to do. And, um, your dad is a great musical gift. I went through Curcio and he was one of the guys singing and leading and he just has such a joy. And I think too, he's, uh, I mean, part of it's being Lebanese, but part of it thinks just like being close to God is he's kind of like vulnerable with his emotions. Like when oh, you very, sing, yes. you have to really put yourself out there. Yes. But also in just, you know, looking at somebody that's saying like, you're a good man. Like I love you and proud of you, that kind of thing. It's just, um, very masculine, I think, and a kind of a great gift of the way he, he kind of exudes the love of God. I agree. Um, 
So it's been a very, it's, 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 it, you know, I've been very blessed. Yeah. I don't man. know what to say. Well, now, uh, the, the, the buck's on you, man. Pass, <laughs> pass all this stuff on. You got to pass all this stuff on. Right. So big but, shoes. Yeah, but it is, but it's awesome to have all that support. You know, you're not just doing it yourself. Yes. Um, man, there's so much more we could talk about, but I feel like that's a good note to end on just with, uh, reflecting on your dad and, and the, that legacy and, and kind of your call to, you know, pass that on. Um, let me ask you this though did did you bring some soil for us i did this is native soil i did we look for soil i so did absolutely show us your soil tell us absolutely. tell us about it what'd you so, pick so um my soil is uh from uh last night i was at a soccer game uh coaching the the the, the first and second grade team it was great we won um and that was at christ the king our School parish, go Saints. That's exactly right. So, <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, um, I got some soil from uh, from the soccer fields there. Um, I went to Sacred Heart, and I got some soil from there, right, right there between Camp Holy Spirit and Sacred Heart. Right. Um, my, our parish that we worship, worship, worship at uh, uh, St. Lawrence, um, and then I went to my backyard and I got some got some soil there because hopefully. Those three places will be the places that I can be a part of and and be an instrument of God. And I don't know how. I'll tell you that, <laughs> but well, uh, but I'll continue to ask for ask for guidance and hopefully well, yeah. I'll continue to answer. Well, yeah, he knows. So you just gotta hold on yeah. as he uh, as right. he leads you here and there. That's right. Well, good man. This is very meaningful soil um, from the two parishes that really raised you and are a big part of uh, raising. Uh, your family I now. Some of this other out because I, I brought too much. There we go. It's okay. We'll clean it up later. Right, <laughs> this is a great uh, shot for all the uh, soil fanatics. Go. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, there awesome. you go. I love that. We want we want all three in there. I, did we achieve that? Oh yeah, I think so. Okay. I think we got a little bit of everything. Get your uh, signature on there, Perfect. so we know who this belongs to in particular. Perfect. Perfect. Good. All right, you hold on to it, and then we'll close out. I want to say a prayer over you and your soil and this awesome conversation. So thanks for being here, man. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything you do. Oh, you're welcome. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon Michael, upon all of his family, his father in a special way, upon the soil that he holds and all that represents, upon all those listening, Lord. We just ask that you continue to bless Michael and use him and guide him to, to be your instrument at his parish and, um, and in this place, Lord, where you have chosen him to be. We ask you to give him a spirit of courage, a spirit of love, and a spirit of, of joy and, and, and just self-gift moving forward even more we place him in our blessed mother's hands and just asking for her blessing and her guidance through this hall hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death amen, amen. through her intercession that of saint joseph all your guardian angels and saints may god bless you your soil and all those listening father son holy spirit Amen. Amen. God bless y'all and look forward to seeing you back here on Native Soil. The angels sing out from the heaven. They fold their
me up from out of the darkness Your love brings healing 